Hello and welcome to QUT News. Hello. And first, let's take a look at the fee hikes that are going to hit university students following the government's changes to higher education. Charges could go up several thousand dollars, with some hex debts as high as $75,000. Universities are being forced to re-evaluate as they're slugged with fee increases and funding cuts from the federal government. So we've got to reconsider the way we offer the services, what we provide. Professor Coldrake, however, is confident universities will remain bustling hives of activity. I don't think there will be uh, an overall impact on student demand, but there could easily be an adverse impact on people from low socioeconomic areas. The federal government is standing behind its policy. These are critical plans that will better support and empower student choice, will ensure our system is financially sustainable and will underpin our world-class universities into the future. Queensland Labor is less optimistic. What we've seen with university fees is a federal government that is out of touch. And it's not just current students that will be affected. Along with the increases, the federal government is also proposing the payback threshold be lowered from 55000 to 42000 meaning not only will students have to pay more, they'll have to pay it back sooner. Predictably, students aren't happy. Well, if I've got to pay for it eventually, then yeah, that kind of sucks. I think it will drastically affect a lot of families, especially those that are, um, are struggling. Impact us in the future. Not a good sign, I guess. For better or worse, Australian universities are about to see some big changes. Jenny Archdell, QUT News. Queensland's attitude to shopping on public holidays is under fire. Many Brisbane residents were angry that only one major supermarket was open on Labor Day, and that was because it was on federal land and at the airport. Woolworths at DFO Skygate became a scene of retail chaos yesterday, the only supermarket not covered by the state's regulations and allowed to open. The National Retailers Association is pushing for Queensland legislative reform to give major retailers the choice to open their doors on the Labor Day public holiday. The National Retail Association supports Labor Day being a trading day in Queensland. Many shoppers were taken by surprise, but turned to independent stores like IGA, which avoided the restrictions because they're smaller operators. I think that people deserve a day off, to be honest. Yeah, even retail workers. For convenience stores, it's a blessing. Yesterday, more than 200 customers walked in, and they really appreciated that we were open on public holidays. Others believe workers should be given the option to work on Labor Day. They must look after the workers because if they want to work, uh, they work for a reason. They work, they work because they want to earn money and uh, that keeps them going in life and uh, I think they should be open in my opinion anyway. After Easter and Anzac Day, yesterday's Labor Day public holiday meant Queenslanders could enjoy a fourth consecutive short working week. That comes at a hefty price to the industry with some operators unable to afford to pay penalty rates. Being an owner, I don't have to, I, I don't hire on the guys on public holidays because it costs us a lot so I have to work myself. It's unclear what impact the Fair Work Commission's decision to slash penalty rates will have on the state's public holiday trade. Melissa McKay, QUT News. Colombian police say they were tipped off that an Australian girl was carrying nearly six kilos of cocaine out of the country. If found guilty, Cassie Sainsbury faces up to 25 years jail. Colombian police have released new photos of Cassie Sainsbury wearing handcuffs standing in front of what authorities say are 18 packages of cocaine. If you are involved in the cocaine trade in Colombia, the system, the judicial system, they're not going to look very kindly upon you. The cocaine was allegedly hidden inside headphones, which Miss Sainsbury purchased before her departure. Cassie's family has started a crowdfunding campaign to assist with lawyers' fees. Uh, the judicial system, you know, it, it is corrupt, as, as are many systems around the world, but I think she will get a fair trial. Cassie's fiancé, Scotty Broadbridge, has defended the campaign from social media backlash. He says, we're trying to get an innocent girl back home where she belongs. The headphones were purchased as gifts for her bridal party from a Colombian local who was showing her around. She's admitted to carrying a package which contained cocaine, so I don't think the question is whether she'll get a fair, fair trial, the question is whether or not her version of events are real. Cassie's family says she's innocent and has been framed. 
She's being held in Colombia's largest women's prison and could face up to 25 years jail. Emily Kuna, QUT News. Australian terrorists are using gift cards to travel to Mid-East conflict zones. There are more than 10 million gift cards worth up to $1.5 billion circulating in Australia. The government believes militants are using them to fund travel and to launder money. International experts say they were used by the terrorists who attacked Paris in 2015. A five-year-old boy is recovering in hospital after a Sydney drive-by shooting. The shot was fired at his parents' house in Lanier in the city's southwest, hitting the boy's hip. The gunshot rang out at 9pm on Monday night while the youngster was playing in his bedroom. His parents drove him to Liverpool Hospital where staff reported the incident to police. Neighbours heard a commotion that night and were shocked to hear what had happened. It's too close to home. I hate to think it was my grandson, he's only a year younger. The boy's sister was playing with him at the time but wasn't injured. Police set up a crime scene at the house and the family car was forensically examined. Our focus at this point in time is on the five-year-old kid and try to establish exactly what happened. At this stage, police aren't in a position to say whether the attack was targeted or random, but their investigations are continuing. The boy was later transferred to Westmead Hospital, where he's currently in a stable condition. Kayla Marchant, QUT News. SeaWorld has welcomed a very rare birth, two cuddly polar bears. They're bred successfully before, but never twins, and staff are delighted. They're furry, blind, and too small to see. But SeaWorld's first twin polar bear cubs are here, and mum Leah is relishing in their cuteness. Captured on DenCam, being very gentle with her latest additions. And we've created a, a maternity den or a birthing den. It's very similar to the wild, basically it mimics the wild. So she's in there looking after both the cubs. Each cub weighs 600 grams and is 15 centimetres long. It's Leah's second litter, so it's no surprise her maternal instincts have come naturally. Um, we can watch them suckling from mum, we can watch them explore and start to move around, getting their feet a little bit. As for Hudson, the father, he's been busy enjoying the world-class polar bears Shaw's exhibit. The birth of Leia's twin cubs are set to bring SeaWorld's polar bear conservation efforts onto a world stage. But with continuing global warming, the only place you may be able to see these creatures is in captivity. SeaWorld says the cub's birth is vital, with only 20 to 30,000 bears remaining in the wild. By 2040, we'll probably have lost 30% of our polar bear population. As for naming, well, some already have their minds made up. Barry. Barry. <laughs> I call it Tigger. Leah and her babies will spend the next few months in the maternity den until they move to a specially built exhibit. The public should be able to set their eyes on the duo in September. Annie Puller, QUT News. Queensland's producers hard hit by Cyclone Debbie are hoping a yearly festival will boost sales. It'll be held in July, but already farmers are urging foodies to support them at the Regional Flavours Festival. The weekend-long food and lifestyle event will return to South Banks Parklands for its ninth year and will cover the full spectrum of Queensland's food producing industry. Visitors can buy and taste local produce from across the state and enjoy celebrity chefs' cooking displays. By visiting, Brisbane residents can support cyclone and flood recovery for farmers across the state. The farmers that were affected by Cyclone Debbie were determined to remain a part of regional flavours. Lockyer Valley's Nine Door Farm is one of the Queensland businesses who will display their produce at the festival. They didn't suffer as much as some producers because they were able to recycle the water for their crops. The underground water was dropping back for about six months really quickly and uh, the cyclones that come down and those rain depressions actually boost our water supply. Others hope that with so much produce on display during the festival, people will be motivated to buy locally. It's a great opportunity for the public to come and actually see how diverse the agricultural sort of sector is within Queensland. The Epicurious Garden supplies local residents with their fresh weekly herbs. 
During the festival, celebrity chefs will use the produce from the garden for their live cooking shows. More than 80,000 people attended the fair last year and the same success is expected for this year. Maudi Veltema, QC News. Looking again at our main story, university students to face higher fees as the government shakes up the education system. And still to come, deadly tornadoes hit Texas. A policeman has been set alight and three others have been seriously injured in Paris May Day celebrations. Rioters clashed with heavily armed officers in the lead-up to rallies by presidential candidates Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen. French police tried to smother the flames as a riot around the Bastille Monument intensified. Officers clashed with mass youth throwing Molotov cocktails. Riot police responded with tear gas. Trade unionists and activists took to the streets to protest over the May Day weekend. Tensions are high ahead of France's final round of presidential elections. Centrist candidate Emmanuel Macron rallied with thousands of supporters. He told them he'd defend free democracy. At Place de la République, hundreds more gathered to protest the National Front's Marine Le Pen. The far-right presidential candidate told supporters scenes like these were exactly what she didn't want to see. The Labor Day riots are said to have mirrored the 2002 protests. More than a million people rallied then, protesting against the National Front when Marine Le Pen's father reached the presidential runoffs. René Bourgeau, QUT News. The May Day violence didn't end in France. There were protests around the world as workers demanded better pay and conditions in political and social rallies. Violence erupted in Venezuela when security forces fired tear gas at youths who were throwing stones and petrol bombs. This marks the second month of protests against socialist president Nicolas Maduro. In Greece, activists accused their government of crushing the working class saying people are fighting for the survival of the poorest. Thousands of Hungarians also joined in a march across central Budapest in a show of support for the European Union. They're protesting what they believe is a creeping rise in Russian influence under Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The rally follows a number of major demonstrations in Budapest over the past few weeks. May Day celebrations are generally more subdued in the US. In New York, protesters united against President Donald Trump's tough immigration policies and his vow to step up deportations. Labor groups joined environmental activists, socialists, communists and immigrants' rights advocates for a large rally in Manhattan. You know, Trump is calling this Loyalty Day. I think that's absolutely absurd. This is the day of the working class to fight for its rights. Annalise Panisi, QT News. In Britain, May Day protests took on a different note, centering on the nation's exit from the European Union. Many want a tough stand from Prime Minister Theresa May. Red and yellow flags bearing the hammer and sickle waved back and forth as far-left protesters took over England's capital. British May Day demonstrations saw a show of strength from pro-labour, socialist and communist movements. War solution! Revolution! War solution! The 1st of May has traditionally been a celebration of the working class, with many on Monday marching for the rights of workers within the European Union. Growing anti-capitalist sentiment within the UK comes with Brexit negotiations underway in Brussels. British Prime Minister Theresa May surprised everyone by calling a snap election in June. She says she needs to strengthen her hand in Brexit talks. And in order to get the best deal for Britain, we need to ensure we've got that strong and stable leadership into those negotiations. As I say, uh, every vote for me and my team will strengthen my hand in those negotiations. A definitive mandate from voters will unify Britain, easing the path of a difficult split. Harrison Bain, QUT News. Britain's Princess Charlotte has celebrated her second birthday. Like most proud parents, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were pleased to share pictures of their beautiful toddler on social media. The photograph was taken by Catherine at their rural home in Norfolk. 
A birthday party will be held in the coming weeks ahead of Charlotte's upcoming flower girl duties for Aunt Pippa Middleton. Tornadoes have torn through Texas, killing at least four people and injuring dozens more. A state emergency has also been declared in Arkansas and Missouri after flooding. At least three late season storms wreaked havoc as they ripped through four states. In East Texas County, homes were flattened and trees uprooted. Search teams are going door to door to ensure no one is left unaccounted. The Texas governor says community safety is his number one concern. The second priority is to safeguard and ensure the surrounding area of anybody who may be endangered and that means going through the process of search and rescue. More search and rescue missions took place in Missouri and Arkansas after heavy rain caused flooding. An Arkansas woman was one of at least 15 who died. She was killed when a tree fell on her mobile home. Also in Arkansas, a 10-year-old girl was swept away in floodwaters and a 72-year-old woman was killed when she was washed away in her car. Residents are laying sandbags in an attempt to protect their homes. More torrential rain is expected. Kayla Marchant, QUT News. Almost a decade after her disappearance on a holiday in Portugal, Madeleine McCann's parents are still hoping to find their daughter. They say they continue to buy her presents every year. Madeleine McCain was three years old when she disappeared from her bedroom during a family holiday in Portugal on May 3, 2007. You told me how you were still buying birthday presents and Christmas presents for Madeleine. Are you, we're yeah, 10 still, years now, are you still, still do doing that. that? I still do that, yeah, I'm not. So you go around not. the shops and you think... Kate and Jerry say it feels like stolen time. Inevitably on the anniversaries and on her birthday, they are the, by far the hardest days, by far. The McCains were dining with friends at a nearby restaurant when Madeline vanished. Portuguese police named them as official suspects four months later. The McCains were cleared in 2008 with the case dropped by Portugal's public prosecutor shortly afterwards. London police began looking into the case in 2011. There is progress. Um, there are some very credible lines of inquiry that the police are working on. Police say they've no definitive evidence about whether Madeline is dead or alive. The investigation is expected to continue for another six months. Emily Cooner, QUT News. Jonathan Thurston has been testing his fitness again in the hope of playing in the Anzac Test. He's undergone running and kicking drills, but says he won't play if the calf injury isn't 100% healed. James Maloney is on standby for Thurston. But the Cowboy star is growing more confident that he can declare himself a starter by the end of the week. Young Queensland golfer Cameron Smith was lost for words after sealing a dramatic playoff on the PGA Tour and collecting more than a million dollars. It was his first professional win. Born in Brisbane, Cameron Smith celebrated victory with his Swedish teammate Jonas Blixt, securing the 23-year-old's future as a professional golfer. It came down to a playoff to claim the PGA's Zurich Classic. Somewhat speechless. <laughs> He's overcome. On Sunday, Smith and Blixt tied with American duo Kevin Kisner and Scott Brown at 24 under par. Darkness forced the playoff on Monday. After three holes and no result, Smith stepped up on the 18th, sinking a birdie putt for his first pro golf win. It was 33-year-old teammate Jonas Blixt's third victory, congratulating the Aussie on his performance. Seeing how he play golf, I mean, the sky is the limit for him. i never seen anything that good in, in an extremely long time. Smith walks away with 1.6 million US dollars, a fitting reward for being completely bogey free for the entire tournament. Harrison Bain, QUT News. The weather details are next with Ashley Dwan. And the museum that is good enough to eat. Hello, time to take a look at the weather. At first, temperatures across the southeast. It was a cooler start to the day with sunny skies in most parts. 
Brisbane hit a top of 26. The Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast both had a max of 25. Partly cloudy for Ipswich. Around the nation tomorrow and Brisbane has a top of 26. Sydney a possible shower and 20 degrees. Canberra a chilly 15 degrees. Darwin warmer at 32 degrees. And Perth mostly sunny and 29 degrees. Most of Queensland will be cloudy in coming days, with temperatures in the high 20s across the state. 29 degrees in Cairns and Townsville, Mackay a top of 27, Rockhampton and Bundaberg 28, and Longreach warmer at 32 degrees. On Moreton Bay, winds will be 15 to 20 knots southeasterly, with seas to about one metre, and the sun will rise at 6.14 tomorrow morning. The outlook for the Gold Coast tomorrow. Cloudy with a top of 24. The Sunshine Coast can expect a late shower or two and a top of 27 degrees. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days. Cloudy with a chance of, with a chance of showers, a top of 26. Showers to continue on Thursday with a top of 24. And Friday we'll see 25 degrees. That's the weather for now. Back to you, Emma. Thanks, Ash. Ice cream lovers can rejoice as Los Angeles opens a museum dedicated to the dessert. Guests are invited to get involved, tasting, sniffing, even playing with the world's favourite cold treat. 10,000 replica bananas hanging in a jungle-themed room might just send any lover of the bendy yellow fruit crazy. But there's more. The banana split room also has a sniff and scratch wall that could tip them into a fructose frenzy. Other delicious exhibits include enormous popsicles, giant gummy bears and a pool filled with a hundred million sprinkles. I had no idea it existed and it's pretty gnarly to see like a, this sort of like pop art style like thing revolving around candy, sugar and ice cream. Visitors can select sample flavours to taste or try treats such as cookie dough cones. Social media fans are encouraged to share their unique ice cream experience online. It's not a traditional museum experience. You're not just going here looking at installations. You're of course tasting and tasting many different things, but we also are all about sharing. It's meant to be a social experience. The museum is open until July. Following its short and sweet stay in LA, creators say they're hoping to go international by next year. Chloe Walker, QUT News. And that's all the news we have time for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.